Bud Hopkins has written several books on UFOs, including Missing Time and Intruders. He is one of the foremost experts on abduction cases, otherwise known as close encounters of the fourth kind. And now we've come to the conclusion that uh, abduction of their involvement with human beings, that this is the center of the entire UFO uh, phenomenon, yes. and that actually when people have UFO sightings, it's very possible that what they're seeing is something on its way to or from an abduction of somebody. <laughs> they're not just flying around up there, they are interested very profoundly in human beings. Whitley Stryber claims to have been abducted by alien beings on more than one occasion and wrote of his experiences in his best-selling book, Communion. I've had, since I wrote Communion, over 55,000 letters from people around the world who've had this similar things that think they have happened to them, and we still get about 200 a week. The Intruders Foundation and the Fund for UFO Research show that one out of every 50 American adults, 3.7 million people, indicate that they may have had an abduction experience with an unidentified flying object. I remember my mother was taken in a jeep and that I was there with a, uh, a UFO. There was a beam of light that came down and I was beamed onto the ship. These experiences sound crazy. It sounds impossible. It, it is impossible according to our physics, but mm -hmm. we often use hypnosis to help flesh out all the, the recollections. A top scientist, Dr. Leo Sprinkle, conducted a five-year study of 82 persons who reported UFO experiences. Most of them were able to relive the experience through hypnosis, and all suffered severe psychological disturbances afterwards. They claimed to have been taken inside spaceships and examined by humanoids who communicated telepathic messages to them. Dave Hunt is an investigative journalist his research and consulting expertise takes him around the world. Cal State University, Long Beach. And again, I forget the names of the scientists there who were working on this, and this is a number of years ago now. They did research, and they took people at random. And unless you're going to say everybody's been abducted, uh, they took people at random and who had no such idea, no indication they'd ever been abducted. And they... Um, uh, hypnotized them, took them into a deep state, then suggested that they were being approached by a UFO, asked them to describe it. Their description <laughs> was the same <laughs> as the others. Uh, they suggested, you're being taken aboard. Or oh, what do the entities look like? And they came up with similar descriptions. And then when they're taken aboard, they're, what's happening to you? Well, I'm getting a medical examination, you know. Or... In his book, Secrets of the UFOs, ufologist Don Elkins made the following observation. I have found that some people can achieve the contact phenomenon simply by being hypnotized. And the same general message permeates over 90% of the millions of words received by thousands of people around the world. No one knows what hypnosis is. No one knows what goes on in the mind. It's an altered state of consciousness like yogis and uh, witch doctors have been practicing. Uh, it loosens the normal connection between your spirit and your brain. And of course, if the hypnotist can control you, make all kinds of suggestions, make you think uh, things are happening that are not happening, make you think you have powers that you don't, experiences that you haven't, even implant memories. Uh, other beings, if there are other minds out there, they could also do the same thing. Sir John Eccles, Nobel Prize winner for his research on the brain, describes the brain as, quote, a machine that a ghost can operate, unquote. What he means by that is your spirit operates your brain in a normal state of consciousness, in an altered state, reached under yoga, a TM, hypnosis, uh, you have loosened the normal connection between your spirit and your brain, and that allows another spirit, other entities, other minds to interpose themselves and begin to tick off the neurons in your brain, create a, a universe of illusion. I believe that it's demonic. I think all of the evidence indicates this. Some people claim that by allowing themselves to be put into an hypnotic trance, they are acting as a channeling device in which the extraterrestrial being speaks through them. 
The following is an actual sampling of those messages. We come from the Interplanetary Confederation of Solar Systems, and our purpose is to aid our brother man on the planet Earth as the New Age dawns. The teacher that was known to you as Jesus was able to use many more of the abilities than the people of this planet. Unfortunately, man upon planet Earth has misinterpreted the meaning of this man's life. He was no different from any of you. He was simply able to remember certain principles. These principles may be realized by anyone at any time. It is only necessary that you avail yourself to our contact through meditation in order to begin to re-realize that which is rightfully yours, the truth of the creation and the truth of your position in it. Know ye not that ye are gods? We have been puzzled at times by the inability of the people in general of this planet to be awakened to this simple truth. We find that the state of hypnosis brought about by the evolution of thought of the people of this planet is so great that it is necessary for him to maintain a constant awareness of his spiritual nature with meditation. Man is now in the transitional period before the dawn of a new age. With peace, love, brotherhood and understanding on man's part, he will see a great new era begin to dawn. In his book, Flying Saucer Pilgrimage, Bryant Reeves summarizes his findings in this statement. From our analysis, the teachings of the space beings appear to support many of the principles taught in Oriental philosophy by seers of the Far East. UFO researcher John Weldon then offers this question. How credible is it to think that literally thousands of genuine extraterrestrials would fly millions of light years simply to teach New Age philosophy, deny Christianity, and support the occult? And why would the entities actually possess and inhabit people just like demons do if they were really advanced extraterrestrials? Dr. Pierre Guerin, an eminent scientist associated with the French National Council for Scientific Research, concludes that UFO behavior is more akin to magic than to physics as we know it and that modern UFO knots and the demons of past days are probably identical. The word demon in Greek comes from the root meaning knowledge or intelligence, implying that demons have access to knowledge and information denied to ordinary mortals. After what happened to me, the communion experiences, I decided that that might be a good idea to accept the idea of the devil just in case that's what I saw. If you look closely, at the life of the world you see the workings of evil in the world there seems to be a sort of uh, machinery behind it that is far beyond just the accident of human life you can literally <clears throat> hypnotize a person tell them that there's a cat in their lap they will see it they will hear it purr they will pet it and feel it it's not physically there you tell the cat to scratch them you know and bring them out of it, there are scratch marks on their cheek. A non-physical object under the right conditions can leave physical evidence. Uh, I think it's demonic. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a spiritual power of some kind for which there is no physical explanation. It, the, you can't explain it with the laws of chemistry and physics as we know it. John Keel is a world-renowned expert on UFOs and has written numerous books and articles on the subject. A self-described agnostic, he made this statement. Thousands of books have been written on the subject of demonology, which is the ancient and scholarly study of monsters and demons. The manifestations and occurrences described in this literature are identical to the UFO phenomenon. Victims of demonic possession suffer from the same medical and emotional symptoms as the UFO contactees. I would say I was assaulted by something from the unknown rather than possessed by it. I don't, I hope that I was never possessed by it, although there are those who might disagree with me. And uh, I don't think it was something out of craziness. If it came out of my mind, it came out of a part of my mind that uh, is universal to us all.
Like Stryper, there are thousands of others who have also sensed something evil and demonic. Something is here, probing people, inspecting them, planting thoughts in their minds, and manipulating their bodies. I do know from different things that are still occurring within my body that I'm still being visited.